at some hard parts in data production. We ask that you silence your phone at this time, as our show is about to begin. Uh, again, thank you so much for coming out, and we hope you have a good time. So that was some sermon you preached last week, Harold. Let's cut to the chase, Bobby. What are we doing with our sand ball? You needed 10,000 votes in my district, and that's what I delivered. And with those votes, you're on the verge of winning your gubernatorial race. Now I've got an itch for sand ball seat, so you need to start scratching. So we'll just skip the foreplay, get right down to business. Is that it? Doesn't your Bible say a little something about patience? Come on now, Samuel's out. Between the crack, the cocaine, and the hookers that we sent him, just couldn't help himself. And it's all on videotape. So unless he wants all that information leaked, he's got no choice but to resign, leaving the mayoral seat open. Look, I'll, I'll call for a special election. We've got plenty of support. The seat will be yours in no time. Good. Good. And now for the second part of the deal? Yeah, what part is that? Escalating the Prescott name. <laughs> oh. You know, now that my son and your daughter are engaged, that's going to be making sin laws. Yeah. And having an in-law as a governor out on the campaign with me, taking pictures, shaking hands, and yeah. kissing those ugly little big-headed babies <laughs> should definitely help me get the support I'm going to need with. Yeah, well, I, I sure hope there's no skeletons in your closet that I need to be worried about. I mean, before I start kissing all those ugly babies. I don't want to escalate your name while de-escalating mine. I am a man of the cloth, in case you forgot. <laughs> yeah. My garments are as pure as a virgin. And as white as snow. Well, I sure hope so. Hey, chin's up. Muzzle top. Sure. You're, you're asking me why I'm not touching you, why am I not holding your hand, what is the big deal? We just need to make it look convincing, that's all. You don't need to be up under me or anything like that. We need to make it look like we're an item. And if that means holding hands, that's like the minimum. I can't do it on my own. I don't know you. Who are you? I'm your fiance. That's not what I'm asking. I don't know you. Your father and my father brokered a deal. We are just products of their political bargaining, no more than bargaining chips. We are prearranged marital constructs, and that doesn't bother you? I mean, I feel like a heterogeneous hodgepodge. You feel like a what? <laughs> Hetero who? Look, I've done research that says that prearranged couples last longer than those that aren't. So, if you had such a big deal with it, why didn't you tell your father? You don't understand my father. He is a very difficult man, Cynthia. Uh -huh. I mean, he treats me like I'm in the military going through boot camp. You will get an account degree. You will get good grades. You will study the Bible. You will go straight into the ministry. You will take over this church. Here's the down payment of your new house. Everything. Everything in my life has been prearranged by my controlling father. Well, sounds like you're suffering from RPPP. What, what the hell is RPPP? Rich people's privileged problems. When rich people whine and complain right. about That's their privileges. Yeah, 
It is. Look, I didn't choose you, and you didn't choose me. My father chose you. We're in the 21st century, and our parents are still practicing primitive customs, some outdated, dilapidated cultures of ancient antiquity. Look, you are very successful because of your father. Great. Yeah, you owe him a little respect. He's waiting for you in his office. I am successful because of me. I'm my own man. The hell is she talking about? statements in the quarterly reports. Our ledgers are fiscally healthy and our balance sheets are sound, even after meeting a few added expenditures this month. Although I would like to point out that our third part profits are down marginally from what they were last year this time. What added expenditures are you talking about? Uh, the food drive we did for the homeless. I mean, those things cost money. Just, just, just. I have to see to it that we pass that offering plan around a few more times since then. No, I did a good thing making you the church's CFO, Chief Financial Officer. That account degree sure is paying off. And with Elder Birch as a church treasurer, I have in place a wonderful financial team. I don't know what I'd do around here without that genius brain of yours. I mean, who else could I trust to manage my fortune besides my one and only son? Yeah, sure. You know something? I'm really counting on you stepping up and leading the church once my race for a mural seat is won. How about you? I'll be mayor of the city. My son will be the leader of one of the largest churches in the same city. Ah! Prescott name will be legendary. And by the way, speaking of Prescott's, how's this soon to be Mrs. Andrews Prescott? Fine. Everything's fine. Then if everything is fine, why are you so tense? There's nervousness in the tone. Something you want to talk about? I mean, everything was just happening so fast. I mean, it's a lot. What's a lot? Everything. You campaigning to be mayor, you forcing me to marry Cynthia, the governor's daughter, a woman I barely know. Then there's work. And there's you wanting me to take over this church, which is something I'm just not quite sure I want to do. I just feel like I'm under a lot of pressure. <laughs> you know, I was you some years back. No, not really. I was, I was strong. You inherited some weak, recessive genes from your mother's DNA, not mine. When my father, your grandfather, handed the baton over to me, I didn't whine. I didn't burr and complain. I took it, and I ran with it. I didn't look back. I just ran. I kept my eyes on the prize and ran. About 30 plus years later, look at what I've become. Look at what I have built. A multi-million dollar megachurch. Two houses, excuse me, I mean mansions that's paid for. A summer home up in Martha's Vineyard. A slew of luxury vehicles. I'm close to winning the election for me. Your focus should be to continue building on top of the Prescott legacy. As my only boy, you are there to my throne, you are next to mine. You see, son, life is like a chess game. It's about strategizing. It's about thinking and anticipating. It's about being able to see several moves ahead and looking ahead. I'm going to need you to preserve our legacy. Man up, don't be a weakling. 
I'm going to make a fine preacher minister out of you one day. You ever think if I wanted to follow in your footsteps, Pop? I mean, I spent years in school to get that accounting degree. And I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to get that degree. Well, my age is coming. I can't go on forever leading the church. The old man is getting tired. It's your turn to man the post. It's not just about tradition. It's the Prescott name. It's our legacy, and you have to preserve and protect it. Tired? Too tired to leave the church, or are you tired of the church? Anyone with eyes can see that you traded your pastoral passions for your political aspirations, and I'd say that's the real reason you're tired. I caution you to be careful with the next words that come out of your mouth, boy. I said all that needed to be said. And when the time comes for you to step up, you will do so. Understood? Now this discussion is over. Now see your way out. I have work to do. Hello, mother. Hello, <laughs> Sweetheart, sweetheart. Can you please pass me some painkillers? There should be some on top of the desk in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're back again. It's killing me. You need to see that chiropractor. I'll be fine. I just need to pop a few of these pills. Mm -hmm. You pop more pills, then you do get relief. Now, what's going on? You know what your son is trying to tell me? <laughs> well, it can't be anything good because he's my son. So, he was attempting to tell me he didn't want to follow my footsteps as lead preacher of the church. Although I must admit, there are some big footsteps to follow, and that boy will never out-preach me. Anyways, he said he didn't want to assume the throne that I built for him. He mumbled some nonsense about Wall Street, something about starting a hedge fund. That explains his uh, rather lukewarm hello mother. It's the boy's civic duty to carry on the Prescott dynasty to uphold the honor and dignity of my name. Do I have to referee between the two of you? Howard, maybe this is about your dream, not about his. That sounds a lot like what he said. Are you the one feeling his head with all that nonsense? No. No, no, but you did just say he was my son, so it should not come as a surprise that he thinks like his mom. Well, don't you go filling his head with that foolishness. My daddy was a great preacher, I'm a great preacher, and now my son will become a great preacher, and he has to, he just has to. It's keeping with tradition and building on the Prescott legacy. There are plenty able men in the church to carry the ministry forward, Harold. Oh, that might be true, but none of those men are my son. They are not of the Prescott pedigree. Hmm. The boy is a genius, so I'm telling you. The boy really has a talent with numbers. He's a mathematical genius. Hmm. By the way, who else am I to entrust with assets to all of our assets? <laughs> I'm way too busy. I'm preaching and campaigning for that mayoral seat. I simply just don't have the time or the energy to monitor the day-to-day -day financial affairs of the church. I can trust a boy in the way I can't possibly trust anyone else, so I'm going to need him around me. I hate to admit it, but you do make a valid point. I would find it very hard to entrust our finances to just anyone, but give him some time. Let him come around. Try, try not to push him so hard. You are always soft on the one. Anyways, can you imagine? I'll be mayor of the city, and you'll be the city's first lady. <laughs> and with Jacob running the church, we'll have ecclesiastical and political power. We'd take the city by storm. We'd be unstoppable. You are something else. Do you know that? <laughs> What am I going to do with you? Well, I could think of a few things you could do with me. Uh, Pastor Prescott, do I have to remind you that we are in the presence of the Lord's house? You behave yourself. 
I have to go and meet with some of the elders and discuss a few things with them. You and I, well, we can go over a few things we can do together later. At home. <laughs> mentioned uh, I made $60,000 today. Man, I had on my last week, big trade after trade, I've been making a killing. $60,000? $60, That's what my dad pays me for the year, man. Oh, you're only making $60,000 a year? Man, all those hours of us studying in school together, you're settling for $60,000 a year, man? Are you kidding me? But with the skills you possess, you could be making millions. Hey, I told you before and I'll tell you again, whenever you're ready, just say it immediately. Just say the word, I set up a meeting for you to come on board. Uh, I wish it was that easy, Scotty. Yeah. It is that easy. Just say when. No. My father has me by the balls, man. Oh. Are you still afraid of your old man? Are you scared of him in college? You're still scared of him now. Hey, he paid for those years in college. And he never lets me forget about it, either. He holds it over my head like a dark cloud, telling me that I owe him for my college education. Oh. And I have to repay him by managing his church's finances. Man, you old man's worse than the loan sharks. You're letting them hold you captive, so you're missing out. I know. I know. But uh, I, I, I've been looking over the last recent statements here. We're actually doing pretty good. Yeah. They do me a favor and send me over the last uh, quarterly reports and send them to my home address. Oh, home, home address. Yeah, yeah, not the church address. That's right. right. My father can't do anything. <laughs> Circumventing the old man, huh? <laughs> Something like that, Scott. <laughs> All right, you got it. Then. All right, then. I found this in the mail. Why are the church financial statements being mailed oh. to the house? Take that. There's nothing to worry about. It's nothing. Yeah, it doesn't really look like nothing to me because there's $80,000 on the statement. What are you up to? Um, I got in touch with Scotty, okay? And we've been doing a little trading on the side. Who's Scotty? You must know he's an old friend from college and he's running a hedge fund on Wall Street where I should be working. Please don't tell me what I think you're going to tell me. Are you gambling the church funds <laughs> into the... Financial market. Gambling. That's for Bates. What I do is call intelligent investments. Look, look at this. Month after month and quarter after quarter, I've been outperforming the S&P small cap stock. Look at that. Year to date, I've made it 24%. That's more than all the NASDAQ composites combined, and we're only in the second quarter. If I continue this rate, I can double the church's finances. I'll be making the church money hand over fist. Yeah. Okay, but I have no idea what any of that means. I know that people lose their entire life savings or their 401ks by gambling in the stock market. Does Elder Birch know about this? Or better yet, does your father know? N neither of them know, okay? My father doesn't know, and he's not going to know either. Harold knows nothing about the stock market. All he knows is what I tell him in meetings is as long as I'm telling him and showing him that the church is making money, He's happy. Is this legal? No. Those are people's private donations. They're tithes and offerings. They're non-profit funds. I mean, I'm sure that you understand the risks, so what if something goes wrong? You won't. Trust me. I only invest 15 to 20 percent of all profits and not the principal. I use exotic financial instruments known as options to gain leverage. Yeah, again, I have no idea what that Why means. Why keep asking me this? My father, I 
this, I don't understand why you're questioning me about something. This is where, this is my area. This is what I do. This is what I went to school for. And you're questioning me about something that I, I have control over what I'm doing. I can handle this. Why are you constantly asking me stuff about what I do and what I'm doing right now? Because I'm concerned that this is not legal. Does it matter if it's legal? Does it matter if my dad knows? Does it matter? I'm in charge. I run the numbers. Just forget about my father. What are you, a spy? No, I'm not a spy. Are you his informant? Are you taking information back and giving it to Harold? No. I'm just concerned because this is crazy risky. That's all. Listen. This is the only area of my life where Harold has no say. He has no control, Cynthia. In the world of stocks, I'm king, not Harold. And I'd like to keep it that way. I don't like this one bit, but you won't tear a peep out of me. Good. I know, I know, I understand all of that. Just do what it is I'm asking you to do. Oh, look, I gotta go, okay? This dog and pony show. This guy is such a wet blanket. All he does is whine and complain about his father. Honey, you are you are doing your country a great service. Dad, this isn't a joke. This isn't funny. Look, just a little bit longer, okay? Uh, remember, in order for me to push through the issues that you're concerned about, like paid family fair. leave and gender pay gap and planned parenthood. It's so manipulative. I need to be governor. Just keep the charade going a little bit longer. No, There'll be no actual marriage. That's not what I'm Howard concerned about. Howard needs to believe that this is going to happen. But you just listen to me. I already have the votes I need locked up. Just a little longer. It's not okay? a good idea. Sweet. Just a little longer. You owe me big, Dad. Oh, I am. I couldn't do it without you. Your father says that you are doing an amazing job handling the church finances. Mother, this is Harold's vision for my life, not mine. Your father loves you, and he only wants the best for you. Harold could give a damn about what I want. All he cares about is his role for office, and me making him money, and all that he's happy. That's all he cares about. It's all business between us. Why are you always silent? I am not taking sides. It always seems that. No, way. your father loves you. He cares about you. He only wants you to be twice the man that he is. I wish I could be half of the man that I want to be. Just one time the man that I want to be. I just wish the two of you weren't so. I just wish I could have made some bad decisions. Oh, some, some poor choices. Uh, poor choices like what? <laughs> well, like, um, uh, like dabble in some drugs. Oh. Smoke a little crack. Okay. All right, well, maybe not crack, but maybe smoke some weed. Take, for instance, I am an African-American man, and not once have I ever rolled up a joint. Not once have I ever poured out a glass of wine for my deceased associates. I have absolutely no street cred. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. No street cred whatsoever. What are you about? None. None at all. Because if you did, you'd know it's 440 for my dead homies. And about rolling joints, trust and believe it's an overrated experience. So. You smoke a weed, Mother? Mother has a past. 
but <laughs> seriously, okay. seriously, your father is a, he's a very proud man, and he is a very strong-willed man, and I will admit that he can, on occasion, be a borderline domineering man, but he only wants the best for you. Your father cares about you. Like forcing me to marry Cynthia, that's best for me, right? What is wrong with Cynthia? She's a perfectly lovely girl. The two of you look amazing together. Nothing's wrong with Cynthia, except she's the governor's daughter. I mean, anybody with eyes can see that this marriage is going to be used for political leverage to get the governor to throw his weight behind Harold for this mayoral seat that he's constantly talking about. Jacob, I I won't speak to what your father's motives are or what they are. But I do know that he cares about you. I do know that he only wants the best for you. Not once has Harold ever said that he loved me. He's constantly telling me of what I owe him for my college education, how much I owe him for my tuition and my house. Always, oh, I owe him this and I owe him that. I'm surprised he's not telling me that I owe him for the sperm that he deposited in your egg or for the air that I breathe. Not one time has he said he loves me. On the surface, I'm starting to see things, you know. On the surface, it may look like that I'm a spoiled, privileged son, and he's a good father. But all anyone would have to do is just scratch beneath the surface and see that all he's done is put me under his spell. Spell? What, what are you talking about, Jacob? What kind of spell? A spell of servitude, Mother. Doesn't Proverbs 22, 7 says that the borrower is servant to the lender? Don't you see? Mm -hmm. I'm the equivalent of the borrower and he is my lender. I am indebted to this man. How could I ever say no? Harold's playing chess, mother. He doesn't see me as his son. He sees me as a chess piece that's here to make him money and preserve his so-called Prescott legacy. That's what I believe. Jacob, I... Excuse me for a second, Mom. I need to, uh, I need to make a call. Excuse me, Mom. Listen to me. Now, second of all, you do not need to be concerned with Harold. I am just using him, I have been using him, to get the African-American votes that I need in this district. Come on now, you know how this business works. You gotta give in order to get. I had to tell him I was gonna help him when you see. I'm just, you know, dangling the carrot over the greedy rabbit trick, that's all. Sandy, baby, trust me. The last thing any of us wants is some self-proclaimed, self-righteous preacher being the mayor of this city. Hey look, you just leave all of that to me, okay? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I think I got an idea. I might be able to create a scandal. Make sure he never runs against you. All right, I'll talk to you. Hey. Governor Andrews, how are you? Very well, and you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good, good. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 
Listen, my, my daughter, she's told me that you started investing in the stock market. Oh, did, did she? Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I wouldn't call it uh, investing, but I, I've dabbled a little. Okay, okay. Well, um, you didn't hear this from me, but the Hill, it's about to ram through some legislation or to set the steel sector ablaze. Particularly a company by the name of uh, Sky Steel, treats under the symbol STS. You just, you just consider this a, an early wedding gift for my soon-to-be son-in-law, huh? Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, and uh, Jacob, um, this conversation, it uh, never happened. All right, all right. Good boy. trading activities of Jacob Prescott. Yes, that's right. Oh, uh, I'm confident they'll find something. Good. is you never had to work hard for much. So you take all that I've done for you for granted. You don't appreciate where you are. I guess I have myself to blame for that. Appreciate. You want me to be appreciative of a job that you decided I should do? You want me to be appreciative of a woman that you decided